Well, uh, I thought, yeah, I think um, it's very easy, not easy, but I think it could, it could have fallen into a stereotype. Like you say, there's a gray area. There's, there's a lot of motivation and reasoning behind what he does, and he has a moral core. He just has a method which is pretty brutal and abhorrent. Uh, uh, maybe not in Bob's new world, but uh, in, in, in our world, uh, our democratic world. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, he, you know, one man's terrorist is, is another man's freedom fighter. And I think there's an ability to sympathize and empathize with his cause, maybe not his, um, uh, maybe not his means of going about getting his ends. Uh, I think it was there in the script, though. And it was, it was a beautiful thing to be asked to play this, this, this sliding scale of uh, someone who could be trustworthy and understandable, and also somebody who could be out and out on a mission of revenge and um, trying to bring about what he sees as justice and a, and a change in the order of, excuse me, a change in the order of uh, authority, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I think it's, that was one of the brilliant balances, I think, that was achieved in the script. Um, that you do, you oscillate between, in, in the same way as you should, because you're going with Kirk's journey on it, you should be able to move between sort of abhorring him and, and feeling something for him. Uh, I, I think that um, not only am I grateful to the writers for uh, writing a script that celebrates and exploits ambiguity uh, and allows the bad guy to live in a place that uh, is compelling and um, not entirely uh, clear and certainly not one note. Uh, I'm also very grateful to the writers, notably uh, Damon, who said you should check out Sherlock, which I had not done. Uh, and when we were casting this part, uh, it was the perfect um, uh, medicine for <laughs> the, the, uh, what we were suffering from, which was uh, not really being able to figure out who was someone who inspired us uh, in the way that we needed. And when I saw Sherlock uh, and was, of course, uh, blown away and then called Benedict and we spoke, and, and uh, Benedict uh, famously, I suppose, auditioned uh, on an iPhone. And uh, when we watched that video, it was 100% clear we found our man. Um, and working with Benedict, frankly, uh, exceeded all expectations. And I think that everyone sort of felt on the set, there was a kind of, uh, everyone sort of, I think, stood a little bit taller when, uh, when he was around. And it was a kind of a, a wonderful way to uh, take advantage of what the story was, because this was a very intimidating figure. Uh, well, the first thing I did when I was asked if I was interested was, uh, was call Damon, Bob, and Alex uh, and, and said, you know, do you want to do this with me? Because I was not a Star Trek fan, but I was very intrigued by the idea of creating a version of Star Trek that would appeal to me and, and people who were fans of adventure and fans of movies. Uh, luckily, those three uh, uh, are significant uh, Star Trek fans, and it was a, immediately uh, the, the beginning of the, the conversations with us and Brian Burke uh, just was a, among the most fun, you know, professional experiences ever, and uh, was really one of the, the reasons why doing a sequel appealed to me so much, the idea of working with them and the crew and the cast again. I sat down because I got an email, it was in, I got an email from JJ, I just had landed in a, on a flight from New York and I opened my phone and the first email that popped up was from JJ and it just said, do you want to play Scotty? <laughs> and uh, I was totally aware of the project and I was very excited about it and I thought, oh great, JJ's doing Star Trek, this will be great. I didn't for a second expect to be involved, so when I got that very straightforward, blunt kind of request. I, I literally sat down and asked the plane to take off again so I could, <laughs> so I could think about it. I, didn't, I was worried. I, to be honest, I was a little bit like, oh, what do I say? What do I, I can't just say yes. It feels like we should have some romance, you know, some kind of, there should be some sort of, can I be on tape or something? Or maybe we could go out for dinner and uh, have a movie, and then I might say yes. You never know. And I felt like such a slut just going, yes! <laughs> So I, I took like three days of pretending to think about it, and then uh, JJ said, I remember very clearly JJ <laughs> said, because I, I, you know, I was like, wow, this is such a huge commitment, and is it going to be like, are we going to be doing this for such a long time? And JJ said, the worst thing that can happen is that every couple of years we get to spend some time together and have a lot of fun, and it was just a no-brainer from that point. Ours was um, a little bit more romantic. <laughs> um, 
J J JJ uh, phoned me up and um, gave me a preamble of, for a good 20 minutes. I had to pull over and ask me if I was committed and if I was interested in Star Trek and if I understood what the costumes were and I understood what the requirements were. And, and I said yes to all of it. And then I didn't still know if he was asking me if I'd like to be part of it or if he just sort of wanted to tell me what he was going to go and do. And um, so I said, I'm sorry, are you offering me this film? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I, th I think that's what's happening, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I, I said, all right then. Let, I, I mean, I said, <laughs> thanks, Simon. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I, I said, thanks, <laughs> thanks very much. And then I went home and um, I saw my brother, who I'd tired from making him run these lines with me, and I just went like that. Probably one of the cooler moments. I, uh, I reached out to a friend of mine. I have a good friend from college who has been in his life to no less than 50 Star Trek conventions, <laughs> um, who is now my business partner, actually, so that worked out. Um, and, uh, and I asked him to compile for me a, um, a booklet of information on the history of Vulcans and uh, the life of Spock and the family tree. And, uh, and we began to enter into a, a session of tutorials, which lasted only until the time when uh, it was announced that I was going to play Spock, which was maybe another month and a half or two months later. Uh, and that's the first time that I met Leonard Nimoy. And then I fired my first tutor uh, <laughs> in favor of the second, who has uh, subsequently become some, someone who's uh, enormously important in my life, both personally and creatively. So Fantastic. He, uh, he usurped that position.